Good day. It's Wednesday, May the 24th. I'm Martin Gago with Market Radius Research. And today we've got CEO Alex Wiley of Volt Lithium joining us. Volt is developing uh, lithium carbonate and LHM from oil field brines in Alberta. And the company just recently announced a resource report with 4.3 million tons of lithium. And just today announced a successful pilot project confirming 90% plus recovery rates. But please remember, this is neither a uh, recommendation nor investment advice. We're here to learn about the company. Alex, thanks a lot for joining us today. Um, you've been busy putting out the news over the last few weeks. Um, why don't you first tell us about uh, last week's um, resource, and then we can get into today's news on the recovery rates in your technology. Well, thank you for having me, Martin. Uh, last week's uh, news release was, as you mentioned, introducing our resource uh, for the Rainbow Lake property. So what we've been, uh, what we've accomplished through our resource is uh, we've got a resource of approximately 4.3 million tons of lithium in the Rainbow Lake project with concentrations as high as 121 milligrams per liter, which are some of the highest concentrations we've seen across Alberta. Uh, we see this resource support as an opportunity for investors to understand how large our project is and also sets the stage for uh, ongoing updates and uh, resource updates and also preliminary economics assessments as we move forward. All right. And then today, the, the, the key to brine technologies is that you got extracted out of the brine in an economic manner, and you've got a huge resource, um, but unless you can extract it, it's sort of theoretical. And so today we get some information that it looks like you've uh, cracked that nut and it seems to be an economical and uh, scalable process. So why don't you give us an overview of, of today's news? Sure. It, this press release that we put out today was uh, a, a very important milestone for the company. Uh, we've determined over our pilot project over the last few months, uh, one of the key criteria that we tried to determine was, can we extract uh, lithium from low concentration brines? And that was a key technical hurdle that we had to achieve. Uh, we've been running our pilot and our pilot, the way we run it is we're trying to simulate commercial operations in our pilot. So the equipment that we're using will be similar to the equipment that we use in commercial operations. So we're dealing with real live environment in terms of scale and also uh, ability to process. And we achieved that hurdle. We, received, we achieved up to 90% extraction results uh, you, in our pilot project. And in addition to that, we've also been able to demonstrate that we can do it economically. When we're at uh, the high end of concentrations at 120 milligrams per liter, we're getting economics or operating costs of less than 4,000 a ton. So we're very pleased with the results of our pilot project to date. And just to put that into context, what is, let's say, the spot or the ballpark selling price uh, today of that lithium, what you could approximately sell it for? Well, the product that we're ultimately going to produce is lithium hydroxide uh, or monohydrate. And the selling price of that uh, commodity today is anywhere from 40,000 to 50,000 US per ton. So it's a very profitable operation from an operating cost perspective. Gotcha. Okay. And uh, you, have, you, you can extract higher amounts from the higher concentrations, but at the lower concentrations, which is 34 uh, milligrams uh, per liter, you get, um, uh, those are also economically viable uh, extraction processes. Yeah, and that is the key because we, all our pilot testing to date, or the majority of our pilot testing, when we were trying to get our technological breakthroughs and trying to get our, and when we achieved our 90% extraction rates, that was done at 34 milligrams per liter. We provided an analysis of our operating costs in a range from 50, which is the average from our field and other fields across North America, all the way to 120, which is some of the higher extraction results we've had. At 120, we're about 3,900 a ton for operating costs. At 50, we're at about 8,900. So under all scenarios, we're highly profitable with our operation. All right, and the... Um... This is a novel process or, or parts of it is, is novel what you're doing. The, I guess you have a nice graphic in the news release where 
the, the first stage is, is sort of, uh, it's established technology. And step two in your process is the novel, call it Volt Lithium uh, Technology, IES 300, um, that technology. Um, scaling tech, there, there, so there, there is technology risk there, and scaling is always an issue um, uh, as, as going from bench to pilot to commercial and so forth. So, can you explain what stage of that pro uh, of that uh, technology validation you're at, and uh, how comfortable you are with it, and what are the next steps to proving its scalability? Well. And th that is where the pilot project has been so critical. Uh, getting extraction results in a lab or on a bench, uh, we were e easily achieving those results uh, over the past 12 months. When we moved to the pilot and we scaled up, there was a lot of technical challenges and hurdles that we had to overcome. One is just sheer volume of brine, of brine that's processed and also the equipment that we're using because the equipment we're using will ultimately be used in the commercial application. So we believe that the, the scale up from bench to pilot has been pretty monumental. And it's been a technological breakthrough for us. From us to go from pilot to commercial now, we're actually working with our equipment supplier now. And we're just determining now scale of things like tankage, volumes and process. But the equipment that we're actually using from a water treatment perspective to remove contaminants, and also the process for our direct lithium extraction process where we use filtration and other types of processes mechanically to uh, extract the uh, lithium from with our technology. That's something that we've proven now. And now we can use that and just increase the size of the tanks, increase the number of filters so that we can move from that pilot to commercial. There will be scale up risk, there's no question. But the biggest hurdle was going from the lab to where we're at in pilot right now. And you, you mentioned this in your news release, but on the cost sides of it, there, there's, um, there, there's consumables. Uh, uh, there's got to be energy going into it to run the pumps or maybe some other processes. It's primarily on the consumables. That would be like reagents and chemicals to help facilitate uh, the process. Can you just break down uh, the costs and discuss what the, the costs are roughly in, in your process? Sure, from an operating cost perspective, when we look at taking that 3,900 at 120 as an example, uh, about easily 60 to 65% of those costs are consumables and reagents. Uh, power is, a very, is probably the next big component of our uh, cost because we've got to have power to run the front end from a treatment perspective, a DLE process, and also ultimately the upgrading. We're lucky with our project in terms of where we're situated. We're on an oil field. Uh, the ability to produce power is significantly cheaper than if we weren't at an oil field. So if, as an example, uh, the producer flares natural gas right now. We can reuse that gas. We can put it into a cogen facility and we can create cheap power. So where I see us going from where we are today to ultimately going into commercial, where we need to optimize is in our reagent use. And that's what we're doing ongoing on a very active basis. But we're happy with where we are now. We've, we've set a marker. We know what we've got from a cost perspective. We know we can do it profitably. Now we improve on that. Your consumables, the reagents, are they... Um any of those proprietary to you or like, or, or I guess, are they readily available consumables or, or could you be sort of stuck in a supply chain issue where your vendors can't uh, scale up uh, uh, at the same rate that, that you can? Our consumables, uh, what we're looking at is creating a system and a, a facility where we actually create the consumables on our own. So, as consistent with other producers, uh, caustic uh, for taking out contaminants and HCL for the ultimate lithium chloride concentration brine. That's something we're looking to manufacture on site. We do not want to have supply chain issues. And that's a big part of our process as we move forward. And it's by being able to manufacture on site, uh, that's going to also reduce a lot of risk for supply chains and also allow us to manage our costs. All right. 
you are uh, in a sense a mining company because you're getting lithium, which is typical, but you're actually under the, the rules and regulations of an oil and gas company with those sorts of uh, regulatory um, uh, environments and disclosures. For a mining uh, operations, one of the large uh, issues and concerns of investors with um, new projects is what the CapEx is. You haven't done your PEA, so um, you don't have an official number on there. Uh, is there anything you can comment on what the potential uh, CapEx or upfront costs would be on a project like this? Well, that's a great question. And I'm going to answer that in two components. Um, one is we needed to have the pilot project so that we know the equipment that we're going to use when we go into commercial operations. That was a really big deal. So in us, in our ability to estimate capital costs, we've got a much better idea post pilot project than we had before. Um, when we look at how we're going to ultimately build out this project, we're going to start with a, what I call a stage one commercial. We want to start with a smaller commercial operation and then scale it up to 20,000 tons per annum like everyone else. Stage one, we're in the range of 50 million to get ourselves into production. You're cash flowing 30 to 40 million at that point. Now for us to go to 20,000 tons per annum where we're similar to everyone else and we're going to scale up from 1,000 to 20,000, you're in the same range as everyone else in that $600 million range, five to 600 million. Now we think that Growing it from a smaller base, ultimately growing to 20,000 per annum is a great approach because as you mentioned uh, earlier, scale up risk. There's always a risk of scale up. So by managing our capital costs upfront, getting the commercial operation uh, well-tuned so that we can expand from there will allow us to better manage our capital costs as we go forward. The way we're gonna do that is through our preliminary economic assessment. We're gonna to demonstrate to people, okay, that we've shown that where our operating costs are, now we're going to pull together our capital costs and the pilot project significantly helped us to get there. Your phase one with a $50 million CapEx, roughly like at full scale production, you're at 20,000 tons. Um, what would the $50 million facility roughly produce annually? Our goal is to do a thousand tons per annum, okay. and that'll depend on concentration. We may be a little higher than that, depending on the concentrations. But I think a thousand tons per annum is a good estimate for this point. Gotcha. All right. And um, you're planning in the news release it says to go into uh, commercial production in the latter half of next year. Um, what are the next steps? You, you mentioned PEA. Uh, what, what milestones over the next for the remainder of the year over the next 12 months should we be uh, expecting? Well, we're going to utilize the PEA to really hone in what we need to do from a capital perspective. So what we're doing today is we're working with our equipment supplier. We're looking at equipment for other parts of the process, including refining, uh, to upgrade to lithium hydroxide monohydrate. So we're doing our engineering work now, and our goal, uh, along with the PA, is to demonstrate from an engineering perspective what we need to do, and we're going to be communicating that to the market over the next six months. So the next step is our PA, and our expectation is to get that out by the end of summer, with a fully aligned capital cost from an engineering perspective. So we know exactly what the build out looks like as we move into next year. All right. Uh, I think we covered all the, the high points here. Uh, anything we missed or anything you want to uh, highlight before we uh, wrap things up? I appreciate your time. And uh, I, from a team perspective and from a uh, Volt perspective, we're really happy about achieving this milestone and the work continues. All right. Thanks a lot, Alex. That was a great update and looking forward to getting further updates as uh, things move ahead. Cheers. Thank you.